Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Taylor. I am an obstetrician gynecologist and I'm here to share the simple steps to help you perform a quality cord blood and cord tissue collection using the Cord Blood Registry Collection Kit. Your goal is to collect as much cord blood as possible to help maximize the number of stem cells that can be stored for your patient. A quality collection helps your patient get the cord blood and tissue collection she's counting on. This is the collection kit and it has everything you need to collect cord blood, cord tissue, and maternal blood. The CBR collection bag is completely sterile, and there's no need for adapters or additional tubing in the surgical field with cesarean section deliveries. Okay, are you ready? This is a simple procedure, so let's get started. The cord blood should be collected as soon as possible after the cord is clamped and cut, within a few minutes of the birth and while the placenta remains in utero. If cord tissue collection is also requested, perform the cord blood collection first. Now double clamp and cut the umbilical cord as close to the infant as possible. And when drawing newborn blood for hospital testing, never draw more than three cc's, so you can maximize the cord blood collection volume. Using sterile collection techniques helps prevent contamination by microorganisms that could limit the sample's use. Swab the umbilical vein at the fetal end of the cord using the alcohol swab provided or betadine. Clean with a single motion, being careful not to wipe over an area with the same swab. Close the white clamp on the tubing to maintain a closed collection system. Gently twist and pull the needle cover off. For added safety in surgical deliveries, the needle cap has a radio-opaque tab. Insert the needle bevel side down into the umbilical vein with a single motion. Extend the tubing to its full length and to increase collection volume and speed, make sure that the active flow chamber and collection bag are lower than the uterus. Patience goes a long way when you perform the collection. Several cc's of cord blood may contain millions of stem cells. And it's important to remember, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Open the white clamp to start the flow. The active flow chamber is preloaded with anticoagulant. And when the blood flow slows, crimp the tubing below the active flow chamber and squeeze the chamber once or twice with gentle but firm pressure while holding the needle steady in the umbilical vein. Crimping the tubing while pumping the chamber sends pressure back into the needle and removes any tissue blockage. This helps increase collection volume and avoids the need for multiple needle insertions. Release the active flow chamber and continue the collection. To ensure all blood is completely removed from the umbilical cord, repeat this multiple times until blood flow stops. The active flow chamber lets you clearly see when blood flow completely stops. It may be helpful to milk the cord towards the collection bag, and as a last attempt to maximize your collection volume, you can massage the uterus to attempt to increase the placental blood flow into the cord. If you are unable to collect cord blood prior to delivery of the placenta, perform an ex utero collection. Place the placenta in a provided basin and follow steps one through three taking care to collect blood only from the fetal side of the placenta where the vessels are larger and branch from the umbilical cord. Keep the bag lower than the placenta to increase the collection volume and speed. Continue the collection until blood flow stops flowing into the active flow chamber. When the blood flow stops, leave the needle in the umbilical vein and use the attached white clamp to close the tubing near the Y connection. This helps to prevent leakage and maintain sterility. Remove the needle from the umbilical vein and slide the flexible soft lock safety guard over the needle. Remove the needle by cutting the tubing between the white clamp and the soft lock safety guard. Discard the needle according to standard procedures. Open the blue cap on your sterile clearance vent to empty any blood remaining in the active flow chamber and tubing into the bag. Tying a proper knot to maintain a closed system during transport helps eliminate entry points of contaminants and prevents leaking. Next, loop the tubing between the bag and the active flow chamber and tie a knot as close as possible to the chamber. To prevent leakage, 
pull the knot tightly. Leave at least eight inches of tubing between the knot and the back to allow for closed processing at our lab. Do not use sutures. Remember to complete the cord blood sample label found on the inside left panel of the box and affix the label to the bag. Be careful not to cover the barcode. Place the cord blood collection bag into the plastic bag with the absorbent pad. Seal the bag and return it to the kit. Before collecting umbilical cord tissue, verify the mother has or has not checked the opt-out box in the parent section of the data collection sheet. If this box is left blank and cord tissue is collected, the tissue will be stored and the family will be charged. This is the cord cup. It is not sterile and it should be kept outside of the sterile field. It is filled with cord prep solution, a liquid antibiotic transport medium that helps protect the tissue during shipment. Once you place the cord cup on a flat surface, hold it firmly to prevent spillage of the fluid inside. Carefully open the screw top lid. Clean and cut a four to eight inch segment of undamaged and unclamped umbilical cord. Coil the cord tissue segment inside the cord cup. Overflow of the fluid is normal. However, keep as much of the fluid in the cup as possible to help protect the cord tissue during shipping. Screw the lid on firmly. Again, remember to complete the cord tissue label found on the inside left panel of the box and affix the label to the outside of the cup. Do not obscure the barcode label. Place the cord cup in the plastic bag with the absorbent pad. Seal the bag and return it to the kit. Please keep collected cord blood and cord tissue at room temperature. It is important not to refrigerate the sample. We encourage all collections, no matter what the volume, be sent to our lab. Complete the healthcare provider and baby information sections of the data collection sheet and return the form to the collection kit. Then give the kit to your patient with instructions to call CBR's medical courier for pickup while they are still at the hospital. Thank you for watching this CBR collection kit training video. We encourage you to share it with your practice and other healthcare providers. Your patients will appreciate the extra time you devoted to train on a quality cord blood and cord tissue collection. We're excited to have you join us in our healthcare provider network. Together, we are working to advance medicine through stem cell therapies.